Hi, this is Pastor Mike Bowen from East Lumberton Baptist Church. And welcome to this week's edition of You Asked For It. And again, our goal during this time today is to give you answers to questions that you might have in the Word of God. And it's not a time to debate or argue or have a uh, comment section debate down below. But my goal behind this time is to give you an answer based on questions you have concerning God's Word. Now, in the future, if you want a question answered on my study on You Asked For It, uh, place that question down below in the comments or inbox me personally. And I'll try to cover that question as soon as I get to it in the order I receive it. Today's question I'll answer is this. What's the difference between a sin, iniquity, and a transgression? Many times in the Word of God, you find those words used to describe sin. So what is the difference between a sin and iniquity and transgression. I believe the main place you find that in the Word of God, or a famous story I should say, where you find that in the Word of God, is in Psalms 51. The Bible says, during this time, David was guilty of adultery of Bathsheba, and because of that, he killed her husband to cover that sin up. He was guilty of deception and all kinds of sins, and the Bible says when the prophet Nathan came to David and pointed out his sin, he realized how the wrong he had done. He realized how far he'd gone. The Bible says, in Psalm 51, we find this 19-verse prayer, a prayer he prays of repentance, as he asked God to forgive him. And notice how this prayer how David lists all three kinds of sins. David said, Lord, I'm guilty of sin. I'm guilty of iniquity and I'm guilty of transgression. Listen to God's word now. Psalms 51 and verse one through three, it says, he said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me, it says, from my sin. All three, iniquity, transgression, and sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before thee. Notice how in this text in the word of God, as David's crying out to God, as his sin was pointed out, he now realizes he's done wrong. He now realizes he's guilty of lying and adultery and murder and deception. He's crying to God out of a repentant heart. And he's saying, God, forgive me of my sin, my iniquity and transgression. So what is the difference between these three words used for sin and the word of God? Well, I want to find them, uh, each one for you one by one to give you a clear understanding of what they mean. Now, the word sin is a general word for sin and the word sin is a general word that means to miss the mark. It's actually an archery term. When a man is shooting the arrow at a target, if he lets go of that bow and the arrow flies, hits everything but that target, you would say the arrow has missed the mark. I don't care how close it gets to that bullseye. Unless the arrow hits that bullseye, you would say that arrow has missed the mark. So the word sin means to miss the mark. It means that we mess up. It could be a sin that's intentional or it could be a sin that's unintentional. As the word of God says so well in Romans 3 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God puts all of mankind in that same category, we are all guilty of sin. We all commit a sin at some point in time, whether intentional or unintentional. We are all guilty of sin. We have all missed the mark. So God puts all of mankind in that category. So the word sin is a general word used to describe a sin that's intentional or unintentional. Now the word transgression means to trespass or to go beyond. That means to sin intentionally. For example, if I go to a guy's yard and the guy's got a sign that says no trespassing, I know ahead of time not to cross that fence or cross that boundary for the sign says no trespassing. Now, if I intentionally go beyond that sign and go on that man's property, I'm sitting on purpose because I know it's wrong before I do it. I saw the sign, the sign said don't do it, and I did it anyhow. Sometimes we as children of God and lost folks fall into what's called a trespass. We commit a sin intentionally. We know it's wrong and do it anyhow. We think about it even before we do it and still do it. We're in the Store, we know good or where we shouldn't steal, and we steal anyhow. We're around some person that we're lusting after. We know we shouldn't have an affair, but guess what? We do it anyhow. Sometimes we commit sin on purpose. We know it's wrong, and we commit the wrong even when we know it's wrong before we do it. So the sin means sometimes sin could be intentional or it could be unintentional. A bad thought might go through my mind. It's unintentional. I might get mad real quick and brought out a cuss word. It's, uh, it's unintentional. So many times we sin unintentionally, but sometimes we sin intentionally. We know it's wrong and do it anyhow. So Sunday morning we get up, we know it's time for church. The old devil tells us no, just sleep in. We know it's wrong and we skip church anyhow. That would be an intentional sin. That falls in the category of being a trespass. So a sin is any kind of sin we commit that's general, whether intentional or unintentional. A trespass is an intentional sin. You do it and you know it's wrong to begin with. Now the third word is a word called iniquity. And the word iniquity means to keep on committing that same sin. It goes deeper. It's a deep word for sin. For example, in the case of David, he commits adultery. He knows it's wrong, but 
guess what? He does anyhow. He knows it's wrong to commit adultery, but he still commits adultery. But he keeps on going in that cycle of sin to cover that sin up. He kills Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, to cover that sin up. He lies and cheats and falls deeper and deeper into sin. That's the word for iniquity. It means to do the wrong thing and to keep on doing the wrong thing. It's habitual. It's a pattern. You keep getting deeper and deeper in sin. So the word sin is a general word that means to commit a sin, whether it's intentional or unintentional. The word transgression means to go beyond the limits, knowing good and well is wrong, and doing it anyhow. It's an intentional sin. And the word iniquity means to keep on committing that sin over and over and over again in a habitual form, knowing it's wrong, making a pattern and getting deeply rooted in that sin. In David's case, David said, Lord, I'm guilty of all three. I'm guilty of sin because Lord knows I've missed the mark. I'm guilty of transgression because I committed adultery knowing it's wrong even before I did it. And I'm guilty of iniquity because when I committed adultery, I knew that was wrong. I murdered Noah, that was wrong. And I kept on going down this trail of sin over and over again, knowing it was wrong from the start. So the Bible says David was guilty of all three. That's why he said, Lord, forgive me of my sin, blot out my transgression, and God washed away my iniquity. He said, Lord, everywhere for sin, it fits me. I'm guilty of all. And sometimes we too are guilty of all. Sometimes we're guilty of sin. Sometimes we're guilty of transgression. Sometimes we're guilty of iniquity. And sometimes we're guilty of all three. Child of God. Stay away from sin as the Bible says in Thessalonians. Abstain from the very appearance of evil and try your best to shun sin and avoid sin and obey the voice of God. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord, and thank you now for your word. And Father, I pray that we as children of God will recognize how bad sin is. That sin will carry us further than we want to go. It will keep us longer than we want to stay and cost us more than we're willing to pay. Help us, God, to avoid the very appearance of evil and live lives that are holy and blameless in your sight. God, give us the boldness, Lord, and the strength to stand for you in the face of opposition. And Lord, to stand for you in the face of temptation. And I pray for all these things in Jesus' sweet, precious, and holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week for our next study in U.S. for